Hi kids, it's me, the Spatula Geese, and I am here to tell you how to play Elite Dangerous. Elite Dangerous is now on sale, so I figured now would be a good time to teach you how to play it. But first, a side note, if you're going to buy Elite Dangerous, I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend getting Elite Dangerous Horizons. That's what allows you to land on planets, and that allows you to engineer and some other things. And good news, Elite Dangerous Horizons is on sale on Steam right now too. Good news for y'all, I've taught my fair share of commanders how to play Elite Dangerous. So in this video, I don't have anything written down. I'm gonna be winging it. I'm just gonna be talking. I'm just gonna be telling you what you need to know to get started. Now this won't be a presentation on what the different controls of Elite Dangerous are, so to speak. The controls vary depending on platform and whether or not you're using a keyboard and mouse, a controller, or a flight stick like the HOTAS. And they differ even more from there, depending on how you personally set up the controls. Essentially, the controls are different for everybody, and you need to determine what's right for you. That being said, I do have a couple pointers on learning controls. Number one, I recommend getting a flight stick or a HOTAS if you can, and barring that, go with a controller. Some people like the keyboard and mouse, but myself personally and a lot of other commanders I know cannot use a keyboard and mouse for Elite Dangerous. But keep in mind, if you're going to use a controller, there's going to be a lot of two button commands. For example, for me, using an Xbox controller, Holding down A and hitting right bumper zooms in on my radar, while holding down A and tapping left bumper zooms out on my radar. Or for me, tapping both bumpers at the same time switches between standard flight controls and alternate flight controls, which allow me to strafe. Just don't stress the controls right now. If you need to know how to do something, you can always go to the menus, go to your controls, and look up what the control is to do that thing. And you can always switch your controls around to something that's more comfortable or memorable to you. Think of the controls as very fluid, especially when you're just learning this game. Anticipate that you're going to be going back and forth between the controls often in order to get them the way you want them. Don't worry about getting it all squared away before you start playing. Start playing and as you run into problems of controls then start to figure them out and work them out. The very first lesson I want to give you is don't be afraid. It's going to be okay. <laughs> okay here's my sidewinder Lisbon the pocket rocket. She's actually named after Lisbon from the TV show The Mentalist. So you're gonna start out in something like this, a Sidewinder. It's actually a very adorable little ship. You can do a lot of a Sidewinder. As you see, I still own one. So I don't want you to feel like, because just because you're starting out in a Sidewinder, you have garbage. This is a spaceship. It is the product of centuries of human ingenuity. It can survive high temperatures, radiation, extreme gravity. These guys are chatting their balls off. As you see, I play in open nine times out of 10. There's pros and cons to playing in open, and that's gonna be one of your first decisions that you wanna make. The pro in playing in open is you can make friends, interact with people, have funny moments, you know, all the usual MMO stuff. And most pilots are good people. The cons of playing in open are twofold. The people who are too nice and the people who are too not nice. The people who are too nice have a risk of making the game a little too easy for you early on. A lot of veteran commanders will have ways for you to get rich quick. They'll invite you to a wing and have a mission or two lined up ready to go to get you insanely rich overnight. Don't let them. Before you start grinding out insane amounts of money, I'd probably get to at least the python by yourself you don't want to eliminate the beginning parts of this game when you're struggling as a plucky young commander trying to make your your initial fortune that's my favorite part of my entire elite dangerous career and you should not have that taken from you i have a whole video on this subject another problem with open is well getting ganked attacked by another player particularly players more experienced and powerful than you are coming out of nowhere and blowing you up for no reason and ruining your day making you fail missions and lose cargo and having to rebuy a ship and all kinds of nasty things i've never been ganked and I have a lot of hours in this game. And I mean, I have a lot of hours in this game. All right, in just Xbox alone, I have six weeks, two days, 17 hours, and 20 minutes in this game. I would say 90% of that has been in open. In fact, I've only had someone interdict me pay probably three or four times. There's one guy who interdicted me like 10 times one day. So minus that, I've only been <laughs> addicted three or four times. Um, and none of those instances uh, have I been successfully destroyed. Does that mean I'm really good? No. In fact, com combat is by far my weakest category. As you can see, I'm elite in everything except for the combat ranks. It just means I'm aware. It means I don't loiter in hot spots. Still, you can do everything right and still be interdicted and ganked. But that, in my opinion, is the only real threat when you're doing your day-to-day -day chores in this game. I enjoy the looming possibility of being ganked. And you can see in a lot of my videos when I'm leaving and returning home from Shinrar to Desra, I'm paying attention. Well, let's say you don't want that experience. You don't want to face those types of threats, at least not at first. So maybe you want to play in solo. 
Is there a problem with playing in solo? Absolutely not. Anybody who tells you that makes you wrong or pathetic or anything like that, anybody who tells you that, they have an opinion that does not matter. I told you the pros of playing in open, and I prefer to play in open myself. And maybe someday you will want to as well, but if for now you want to play in solo, go for it. You are not any less of a commander than anybody else. Try to say thanks to that guy who sent me a direct saying nice videos, but he was already offline. Whenever you're docked anywhere, you have this um, HUD. You can launch from it, you know, return to the surface, or go to starport services. Returning to the surface keeps you docked and keeps your access to this menu, and you can even use most starport services, but not all while you're at the surface, because you can't access certain outfitting options when you're up here. But you are still docked. You can go back into the hangar whenever you want to. And I don't know, it's kind of a social way of hanging out for me. I like to sit on pads and look around at my neighbors. If, it's a, if, if you're in a station with your friends or in a very populated station with strangers, you can go over and you can look at their ships and whatnot. We're going to go back into the hangar, though, and access starport services. Here is essentially the main menu of the whole game. Here you can do things that you could normally only do when you're docked, such as you repair your ship, restock it, refuel it. Even though this is a beginner video, I'm going to tell you this right now. Advanced maintenance matters. Go to that. Always want to have your ship integrity maxed out at 100%, which mine is right now, as you can see. It costs barely any credits to make sure that your ship integrity is always 100%. And you always want to uh, have your paint job, paintwork, there it is, at 100%. When you fly around and you, you jump between stars and just do things, your paintwork and your integrity will slowly go down until like 0%. So whenever I dock, I refuel, repair, and I restock if applicable. And then I go to advanced maintenance and I fix uh, ship integrity and paintwork. Boom, boom, every single time I dock and I highly recommend you do the same thing. I don't know if a patch has changed this because the game has changed so much and all that, but as I understand it, paintwork, it changes how uh, people uh, look at you. It changes how the NPCs treat you. So it affects your reputation and that kind of thing. Again, that might have changed, but I always just keep my paintwork maxed just in case. Livery is just where you do the cosmetics of your ship. Holomy is where you do the cosmetics of you. Store is where you buy things for the livery and the Holomy. <laughs> Advanced maintenance, which I already talked about. Shipyard, where you can buy ships, store ships, swap between the ships you have. Outfitting is obviously where you go to change out the modules and weapons and stuff on your ship. And Remote Workshop, if you have Horizons, you have access to engineering. Um, this allows you to engineer your ship with blueprints that you have unlocked with the engineers. But engineering is more of a late intermediate advanced player type thing so if you're a beginner don't worry about engineering for a while and that's a whole nother topic really commodities market it's where you buy and sell commodities food cartridges and survival equipment you can buy and sell between different stations for a profit as a beginner you might be doing some of this to get some of that early easy money but i would recommend researching trade routes before doing this using a website like eddb or anara play the market mission board we'll get into in a minute those are your missions a primary way to make money for beginner and intermediate players if you have a passenger ship Passenger Lounge is where you get passengers. Contacts is a variety of things, like how you pay your bounties and turn in your bounties, turn in search and rescue pods that you find. And Universal Cartographics is where you sell your exploration data. As you travel between systems and find planets and scan things, you're going to get data that you can sell to the cartographics. See, I've been to some systems recently, just as I've been going around the bubble just doing things. I happen to be scanning systems and I've earned some money. It's really, really easy way to make money. 70000 right here and I don't even remember doing this. I was probably just going back and forth for a video or something and just happened to collect data. <laughs> and it got me 70,000. What can we buy of 70,000? Let's, well, let's look at the shipyard first. So I mean, just for just a few jumps of, of scan data, I could have upgraded to a hauler already. Don't worry too much about crashing your sidewinder, okay guys? Crew lounge is where you hire other pilots, NPC pilots, and pilot fighters if you have fighters and they take a portion of your profits as long as you have them. Worry about that when you have fighters, you know. And Galnet has articles sometimes about the universe and what's going on. It's just, you know, immersion stuff. So now you know the gist of this menu. Let's look at outfitting. Here's my Sidewinder. It's already uh, customized a bit. <laughs> So I'll explain outfitting real quick to you. Hard points, that means ship's weapons. Every ship has a different number of hard points and different hard point placement, and that enables you to put certain types of weapons on your hull. It has two crappy pulse lasers on it for some reason. Utility mounts are optional mounts that will have utility. Things like chaff launchers and heat sinks. There's also point defense turrets and other little things like that. Shield boosters are a common one that people use to you know, increase their shields. A lot of times people run with no utility mounts at all because they do, you know, draw 
power, add mass, that kind of thing. Here's another way to access the library to change your appearance. You can store your modules, including weapons and utilities. But the two main ones we're going to look at here are core internal and optional eternal. And what are the differences between those? Well, core internal is stuff that you have to have in order to have a ship that exists and flies in space. Optional Eternals are the things that make your ship perform certain roles for the game, be they mining or exploration or whatever. So Core Eternal, obviously you have your bulkhead, your reactors, your thrusters, your FSD, which stands for frame shift drive. That's what allows you to go faster than light. If you have all these, which it forces you to have in one way or another, your ship can fly in space and you can upgrade them, downgrade them, change them around, engineer them if you have engineering and make your ship better. These military grade bulkheads I have on my Sidewinder are worth more than the Sidewinder. Winder. These can be quite pricey by quite a lot. Optional internal. Shields go in here because you don't have to have shields, but if you want shields, they go in here. Cargo racks. To change what your ship is outfitted for, you just go to one of these internals, go to browse shop, and you can navigate this menu to buy what you need to buy for your ship. Do you want to go exploring? Well, you might want a surface scanner. You might want to map a surface to get some extra money for your discoveries, right? Maybe you want a flight assist. I don't know. Maybe you want to go mining and you need some uh, uh, mining things like a uh, refinery. Yeah, like a refinery. Maybe you want extra fuel. I don't know. You customize your ship the way you need it to perform for whatever tasks you wanted it to do. And early on, you're going to want to get some credits going. So exploration's one easy way, but so is some of the mission board missions. Most people tell you right off the bat to just do some data missions. They take no cargo space, and they're pretty easy to complete. They don't give a lot of money, though, but they, they're okay. Well, this one's Sensitive Data Delivery. 19 light years away, and it's worth 90,000 credits. That's more than enough to buy an adder. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to Cockrell Prospect in ER8. Now, if you fail a mission, or you abandon it, or you don't complete it before the time runs out, then you lose reputation with whomever you're working with. This is the Dark Wheel. Kind of dicks, but um, I don't necessarily want to lose reputation with them because that changes how they treat me and what kind of uh, opportunities they give me. Here's another one. See, it says down there, destination, arrival point estimated 2,700 light seconds. That's how far from the star dropout that you're going to have to travel in the system. That matters. If that says more than like 100,000 light seconds. You might want to think twice before accepting the data delivery or whatever other kind of delivery you're doing. 2,000 light seconds is nothing, but usually people draw the line at 100,000 light seconds because that can really take a large chunk of your time just flying through black space just to get to the arrival point. I'll accept both. We're delivering sensitive data for the Dark Wheel. It might be Raxla related, huh guys? We'll do that in a second, but let's try to get out into space first. Took off my docking computer, so now we have to launch manually, as you will have to. If you want, you can get a docking computer. An advanced docking computer will auto launch for you as well as dock for you. That standard docking computer just docks for you. Uh, I used to do trade routes mindlessly while watching TV all the time. I just use docking computers for. So I've docked with a docking computer, probably, it could be in the five digits. <laughs> okay, so. I couldn't tell you. But out of all those times, easily thousands of times, I've had two docking computer mishaps. Neither of them were severe or killed me or anything. So docking computer mishaps happen where it flies you into something that shouldn't, like the side of the station. But it's exceedingly rare. We're going to manually launch here. Since we're already underground here, it'll take us to the surface first, then launch us if I hit this. So we're going to do that. I'm going to reset my pips because I don't need pips to weapons right now. Ooh. There, that's a good one. Full power to engines, half power to systems, which usually means shields. And no power to weapons, because I don't need them right now. Alright, I will fly up. So now I have about five minutes to leave the station. There's a few things I need to remember to do. I need to take my landing gear back up, as you can see in that bottom right-hand side checklist there. Xbox is holding beam, tapping down. So now my landing gear is up. I'm less likely to clip my landing gear while leaving, and also I won't be able to jump or do anything spectacular when I have my landing gear out. If you're on a planet side, you won't be able to you know, leave the planet surface with your landing gear still out. It says I'm mass locked, but we're going to worry about that after we leave the... Uh, bay here. So we're just going to line up with the uh, exit, throttle forward, and go out it. Usually you want to stay on the green hand side, which I didn't just then, but I was confident there was nobody else coming in at that point, so I just flew straight out. You want to look ahead to make sure no one's flying in or out of the uh, docking bay when you're going to you know, go in and out of it yourself. But if you're at all unsure, I would hug the green lighted side. Protocol is Follow the green lights on your way in and follow the green lights on your way out. The red light is the side of the port the ships coming the opposite direction are going to be coming in following. So now I've left port and I've been flying quite a ways from the station. And now you see the mass lock 
light has disappeared. I am no longer mass locked to the station, so that means I can now jump to faster than light speeds. It also means I'm away from station control, which means the player could totally fly up to me and destroy me without having to worry about the station shooting them. But this would be a good time to show you the differences between the three different speeds in this game. And this is something you're going to have to understand. There are three speeds. There's this speed that I'm doing right now, which is sublight speeds. So this Sidewinder, as, an, as the beginning ship of the game, as a small ship, doesn't go very fast. It's going about 237 meters a second. I can boost and go a little faster. Okay. Or I could go to a complete stop. I often refer to this as normal space. There's no folding the space time going on here. This is the space where you can interact with stations, dock, land on planets. This is the speed at which you fight in combat. You can't do any of that when you're going faster than light. So let's go to the second speed. The second and third speeds are faster than light. One is called low wake and the other is called high wake. Well, technically low wake isn't always faster than light, but it's always extremely fast but it's still utilizing your frameshift drive and putting you in slip space. Both of them require your FSD to be functional. So remember that module, the frameshift drive? There it is. So we're going to activate the frameshift drive and go to low wake speeds. On Xbox, it's just tapping Y. You can set the button to be anything you want it to be. You can set your controls any way you want them to be on PC, etc. But whatever the button for activating the frameshift drive is, once you're no longer mass locked and your cargo scoop is up and your landing gear is up, and all those lights are off down there in the bottom right, and your hard points are away, then you can jump to low wake or high wake if you have a system targeted. What are hard points? Again, those are your weapons. See, I'm just deploying hard points. There's my pulse lasers. There's a rectangle in the middle of the screen. Clearly, my hard points are out. If I try to activate my frameshift drive, it's not going to let me. Frameshift drive cancelled, hard points deployed. So I'm going to put my hard points away. I am activating the frameshift drive now. Frameshift drive charging. I am now at low wake. You can see my speed is climbing quite rapidly. Um, I guess I'm not technically going faster than light yet, but I will be soon. Here you're in, you're in frameshift. Essentially, your ship is in layers between space-time as it's traveling, which enables it to travel faster than light. So, in other words, space-time is folding around you a little bit. And you can see other ships doing the same thing around you. There'll be bright dots or orbs. See, there's one. There's another ship also slipstreaming here. They're at low wake. They have that light around them, that blue stream. They're also between the lines of space-time. This is the speed for traveling between objects within a system. See, now I'm going seven times the speed of light, eight times the speed of light, nine times the speed of light, and go up to over a thousand times the speed of light if you give enough time at th full throttle. Despite being between the layers of space-time, objects still impact you with their gravity. So if I slow down next to the star, it's going to take me a while to accelerate away from it again. See, here's the star. Stars are pretty massive objects, probably in its gravity well. I'll get a little closer. And my heat's probably going to go up too. I'm at 32% heat. If I get really close to it, I'll probably start at yeah, 34, 37, 39. When that reaches 100 or above, it starts to cook you and do damage to your internal systems. So I'm going to pull away from it. See, now I'm half the speed of light and slowly climbing back up. I have to pull out of its gravity. See that square? Of a, that's hollow. That's a player. And when you see one of those near you, I would assume that they're hostile. Okay, here's Shinwark to Desra A2. And when I get near it, you'll see an exclusion zone. See, there it is. That yellow line. That surrounds a body don't pass that line <laughs> okay it's that simple whether it's a star a gas giant whatever it's called an exclusion zone for a reason your ship cannot go past that point it will emergency stop you to protect you from gravity radiation heat whatever so if you fly straight at a star you won't be able to just fly straight into the plasma you'll hit the exclusion zone first and your ship will emergency stop it'll say emergency stopping and your ship will spin out of control your fsd will take a lot of damage um, your ship will take damage in general usually your heat will be skyrocketing that sort of thing and you'll have to wait for your fsd to reboot which could take a good 30 seconds and you'll have to aim away from the object and then go back to low wake and fly away from it as fast as you can so especially when you're fuel scooping stars or you're looking at planets like i am now you want to pay attention to that yellow line that exclusion zone line so now it's closer to that planet so i'm very slowly pulling away out of its gravity well you see boys uh, come on. See, there's two players right there, or NPCs, ships at low wake. You can, they look like comets a little bit. Cobra Mark III, Malcolm the Rotund, that's probably an NPC. Now, a hostile player can chase down another ship in low wake, like I'm chasing this guy, 
and uh, actually interdict them, pull them out of low wake. If you pull a ship out of low wake, then you're both in normal space again, and then you can interact and, you know, shoot each other. Do you understand the implications of that? So if you suspect someone is hunting you in low wake, they might be trying to interdict you and pull you back to normal space so that they can attack you. So don't let that happen. Uh, NPCs and players can do that. So let's go to our missions. You have multiple different uh, screens that pop up in your ship. I think of it as four screens, one on each side, a bottom screen and a top screen. And each screen has their own tabs, multiple different tabs within these screens. So your mission screen we're gonna look at first, it's your left-hand screen. It's under transactions, we have two here. I'm gonna click on just one of them, it doesn't matter which one. So it's a data delivery, it tells you where you're going, all that fun stuff. If you open Galaxy Map, you can go to it on the galaxy map you can do it through the missions tab ah see there it is it took us right to it in the galaxy map i'll show you how to do this manually later but when you have this targeted you can either plot a route directly to the system or you can actually open the system map if you have the data to do so which i recommend in this case i'm going to click that it's going to take us to the system map looks like we're going to a planet side location to deliver this data any planet or moon in a system with that blue ring means it's landable if it has a red ring it means it would be landable but for some reason it's locked with a permit if this has a blue ring it means it's landable oh you see those uh pillars on the top of the blue ring that means there it's landable and there's uh facilities planet side keep zooming into the object and it'll bring you to the map of the object it takes a minute to load in, but it will eventually. Anyways, we're going to MacArthur Depot. I'm going to target that and plot a route to that instead of the system to save myself time. Hit Nay to plot the route, and it may take a minute, but it'll plot the route. I'm going to back out of all that. Now I have a ro uh, route plowed it. Uh <laughs> a route blah, blah, blah. Now I have a route plotted. It's only two jumps away. Both of these lines are solid. If the line starts to become dashed, that means it's part of the route that you don't have fuel to complete. The computer is anticipating you won't have the fuel to do the hashed line jumps. But since both lines are solid, it looks like we'll have plenty of fuel to do this mission, which it's only two jumps, so I'd expect that anyways. Now we're going to talk about the third state of speed. We're at low wake right now. We're going 350 plus <laughs> speed of light here. Pretty fast. But but that's still nowhere near fast enough to complete this journey between stars. The next star on our route is 15.4 light years away. At the speed we're currently going, it'll take us 15 days to reach it. That's real lifetime, boys. We need something faster than faster than light, and that is high wake. How do you go to high wake? Well, the same way you went to low wake. You hit the frame shift drive button, but when you have a distant system targeted that you can jump to. That's 15.4 light years away. It's targeting it because of the route, and the route already detected how far I could jump. This ship can jump 15.5 light years in a single jump, so I can reach that. It's reachable and it's targeted. So now if I hit the frame shift drive button again, now it's charging the frame shift drive for a jump. This will take us to high wake, but you're only in high wake for a little bit of time while you're in between stellar space. Nothing can interdict you at a high wake except for a Thargoid. So where you pretty much wait, you can't do anything. It's basically a loading screen. Oh! And then it poops you out right into star in a star's face here. And it's quite scary to new players. And for some reason the game will sometimes glitch and not show you the damn exclusion zone of the star. But there it is. This is when you'd fuel scoop if you had a fuel scoop. But get away from the star before you cook to death. Bye bye star. Yes, if your hands are off the controller and you jump to a star, you will keep heading into it and hit the exclusion zone and emergency stop and start taking a whole lot of heat damage. So whenever you're jumping somewhere, don't just get up and walk away. So after you jump, either immediately pull away from the star or hit full stop. Full stop is not a standard bound command in Elite Dangerous. It's one of the ones you have to make for yourself. Set throttle zero is the option. And on Xbox, I bind it to clicking in my left control stick. It just automatically, here, I'll do it now. Boom. Sets my throttle to zero and it puts you to full stop as quickly as possible without putting you into reverse. So when I dropped out at that star, I left high wake and I returned to low wake. So we are in low wake again. And there's the next star in our route, HR4979. I think it's also our destination. I'm lined up with it. I'm going to hit the frame shift drive button again. And it's going to charge the frame shift drive and jump us to high wake again. Here we are in high wake. And yes, we're going to drop out in the face of that star again. So I'm going to be ready to pull away. And I lift and I turn. 
Now, how do we tell which direction our, our destination is in? You noticed I was turning straight toward those stars, right? And now I need to turn straight toward the station that I'm going to go deliver this uh, data to. How do I know where it is? Well, you see there's two radars at the bottom of the screen here. The big one that shows local objects where I showed you where that player ship was on, that hollowed out square. You can see um, where other astronomical bodies are in relation to you that are nearby. And you can actually zoom in and out with certain commands. Um, but how do you determine where your destination is? Well, that's easy. The smaller radar to its immediate left. See that circle? It's hollowed out, which means my destination is behind me. So I'm going to pitch up here. Now it's filled in. That means it's kind of in front of me. I'm going to line up with it, and boom, I'm lining up with my destination, which is now 2,600 light seconds away. And I'm going to fly to it. Now my speed keeps accelerating as I'm flying toward this destination, so it's going to be pretty hard to stop on time. So what I do is I follow the 7 second rule. See that time, how long it anticipates it'll take you to get there? It keeps changing drastically because I, my speed keeps changing. When I'm seven seconds away, I'm going to hit all stop. So we're getting closer, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. Oh, this is a planet though. This isn't a station. <laughs> seven se the seven second rule works a little bit better out with stations, but I guess it still works here. And I am seven away, I'm hitting all stop. And once that climbs back up to eight or nine seconds, I put the throttle right at the base of the blue there. And then usually that's enough to glide you in perfectly to whatever destination you're heading to. It works best with points of interest and stations and stuff like that. Not so much planets. For example, I might speed back up here in a second. But that's the seven second rule. Usually do that when you're trying to approach something. Otherwise, you're going to be overshooting it, driving back and forth, doing loops of shame, just trying to land. And I guess since um, our first destination is planet side, I'm going to be showing you how to land on a planet here <laughs> instead of a station. So... Who cares? Let's do it. You cannot do this if you don't have the Horizons expansion. Ooh, six seconds. I want to slow down a bit. There we go. Now approaching the planet. I guess it's a moon. We're approaching the moon. You can kind of tell where the uh, station is on the moon based on that circle. If you were to pinpoint a dot in the center of that circle, that's where the depot is roughly going to be. So I'm kind of lining up to put the depot on the top of the planet. And spaceships aren't airplanes, but I'm going to land it as though I'm landing an airplane. So I'm trying to get an angle to come down at so I can glide. You're not dropping out yet when you pass the blue. You're just going to orbital control, which switches a few things on your HUD. Now, I like to drop down toward a planet only when I'm like a thousand, or sorry, a hundred kilometers from it. But you want to keep an angle. If you see this red right there, that's way too steep. So be above the red and try to go down at an angle. Oop. I'm getting too close to the exclusion zone. These exclusion zones, if the planet is landable, do not hurt your ship. You're just going to drop out in regular space and fly to the planet manually. I'm within about, oh, I'm still a little ways out. Almost too steep, but not too steep. You don't want to be too fast. You want to be a nice, even speed. I am drop past the exclusion zone now. Glide engaged, because I'm not too steep. I'm heading straight for it. Don't be afraid, even if it sounds scary or if you're going super fast. It'll pull you out of the glide when you get near it and slow you down. See? Boom. I'm still going to all stop. See? But during the glide, I didn't slow down at all. I didn't even worry. This is MacArthur Depot. When you're within seven kilometers of a depot or a station or anything else, then you can request docking. On the left-hand panel, like where we found missions, go one tab over to contacts. You'll find other ships in the area you can contact. There's also the stations you can contact on this panel, like MacArthur Depot. I'm going to request docking. They approve my docking, and I'm going to confirm that by seeing this right here above my main HUD. It says proceed to landing pad four. And I have 10 minutes to do this. Otherwise, they cancel the request. And if you're inside of a station when they cancel the request, then you're violating their airspace and they'll blow you up. So don't take too long is what I'm trying to say. Now, as always, when finding the next system and a destination to jump to or the station you're going to, use that secondary radar to find the dot as to where you're going. See that dot there? Looks like somewhere to my left should be my destination. Let's look. Oh, yes, to my left is landing bed pad 4. Uh, couldn't it be easier? I'm going to fly straight for it. As you get near it, you want to put your landing gear down. So now you have to kind of line up right. The first thing you need to worry about is, are you facing the right way? Well, I'm going to hit all stop when I kind of get in here. I love how that all stop button. You have to bind it. Now you'll see your ship appear on this HUD down here. And you can tell if you're facing the right way, if your ship is facing away from you in the HUD. See how it matches my ship icon to the right? See, this rear of my ship, it's matching. If it didn't match, if my ship was facing me on this landing pad uh, icon, that means I was backwards and you need to turn your ship around in order to dock. But I don't need to turn my ship around. I had the correct direction. So I'm gonna line up with that circle. See it lit up blue when I lined up with it. And now I have a command for putting my ship directly down. I'm gonna hit that. 
Oh. And my wheels touch down. And I dock appropriately. Easy. Just don't overthink it. You know, you're just lining up with the circle and you're putting your ship down with its landing gear out when you're facing the right way. The hard part, I guess, is maneuvering the ship when you're not used to doing it. But just do very slow, controlled movements and you'll be fine. I'm going to enter the hangar. Now, what did I say earlier about what you do every single time you dock? Let's go to Starport Services. You refuel, repair and restock if applicable. Go to Advanced Maintenance. Ship Integrity, top that off for 10 credits. Paintwork, top that off for 10 credits. Pristine, boys. Now I have a mission to turn in here. I'm going to go to Mission Board, Sensitive Data Delivery. I'm going to click that. I have options of what kind of reward I want. Do I want the standard reward of um, credits and base reputation? Or I can turn down some of the credits and get more reputation. Or I can get a lot of influence for their, uh, for their chapter. I'm not particularly fans of the Dark Wheel, so I'm not going to increase their influence. Maybe I want reputation with them, though, so they'll give me better missions in the future. So I'm going to go with this one, reputation. There. And when you're here, you can take on more missions if you want to, whatever. You can go to Universal Cartographics and sell data if you went far enough to do so. Now I'm going to show you how to leave a planet. I'm going to hit launch. I'm going to hit up on my ship, however you have that bound. I'm going to retract my landing gear, pitch away from the planet, throttle away from the planet. You see I'm mass locked? You're going to want to keep flying, even boosting, until you're no longer mass locked. Boop! You're no longer mass locked to the planet, or moon, whatever it is. So now we need to go to low wake, so we can escape the gravity of the planet. So hit your frame shift drive button. There's an escape vector. Try to line up with that. It's basically directly up. Alright, we went to low wake. We are now moving away from the planet fast. We need to build up some speed to pull away from the gravity well, which can take a second. While we're slowly moving away from the planet's gravity well, let's look at the system map. We're going to go back to the left-hand panel. The left-hand panel has everything to do with the world around you and your role in it. So it is navigation, transactions, contacts, everything. It's also your system and galaxy map. Let's look at the system map. That's the system we're in right now. Here it is. This is what it looks like. There can be more objects in a system that you can't see if you don't have all the data of the system or you haven't scanned the system completely yet. But when you're in the bubble, usually you'll see most of the objects in the system, if not all. And let's go to a place that isn't planet side, like Icubol Hub. I'm just going to target it. And guess what? It's going to be on that secondary radar. There it is. I'm already within seven seconds of it, so I'm just going to set that to blue. When you're flying to something that's not planet side, you need to make sure you're going slow enough and you're close enough to drop out of low wake into it. To drop out of low wake, you hit the same frame shift drive button as you always hit. So, look in there and my speed is good. I just need to get a little closer to it. My alignment's good. We're just going to keep aligned with it as we wait for the distance to go blue there. And when it goes blue, it'll alert us. See, press Y to disengage. I'm pressing Y. And now we have dropped out at the station. Now to dock or communicate with the station, you have to be within 7 kilometers, just like that planet side one. I think it's 7.5 kilometers, but, you know, who's counting? You want to request docking? docking request granted. And it granted the docking request. Proceed to landing pad 1, and I again have 10 minutes to do so. If you have an automated docking computer, when you are approved for docking and you're at full stop, zero throttle, the computer will take over and dock you for you. But you need to learn how to dock manually yourself first, because docking computers can be blown out or malfunction, so you still need to always know how to dock. So we're going to go dock manually here. Again, I'll be able to tell where my pad is by looking at my secondary radar there, the small one. I'm going to guess it's that one right there. It seems to line up best with that dot. Now I need to figure out which way is which. It looks like the number 01 is on the left hand side so I probably have to be facing that number. Get my landing gear out. When your landing gear is out you're a little more stable and slower to move anyway so that can be helpful. Alright I'm gonna fly right down there. I'm facing the right way. The butt of my ship is matching my ship icon. I'm gonna line up at the center. My landing gear is down and I push down and I dock. And what do we do every single time we dock? Refuel, repair, restock if indicated, advanced maintenance, ship integrity, paint work. We're going to go to the surface and sit there for a second. That's docking on a station and using the system map. But there's also the galaxy map. The galaxy map shows all the systems around you and you can zoom in and out and target a 
uh, star and jump to it. I often have dangerous stars filtered off so I don't accidentally jump to a, a white dwarf or a pulsar, you know, surprise myself. In fact, I only have fuel scoopable stars on right now. And I just do that by going over here to map and I have it configured by star class and I only have scoopable stars targeted. None of the dangerous ones, none of the ones that can't give me fuel. As a beginner, you're probably not going to be fuel scooping too much, but when you start fuel scooping, you know, you'll need to know um, what stars you can fuel scoop. Now, fuel scoopable stars are O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. An acronym to remember those is O, be a fine girl, kiss me. Some people like KGB foam because it includes all the letters as well. However, it is not in order. O be a fine girl, kiss me is in order. So it's a superior acronym. You can also search the galaxy map for systems that you're looking for. And we're going to do that for this one. I could just open galaxy map and shoot straight to it using this button here, but I want to show you how to manually search. So we're going to Cockrell Prospect and ER8. ER8. Open Galaxy Map. I have a hotkey to open that uh, Galaxy Map so I don't have to go to my left hand panel. Let's go to ER space 8. I don't like the name of this. It is a white dwarf. See what I said and I don't like the name of it? Usually if it's a short little name like that, WR, ER, WD, something like that. It's usually um, a white dwarf or some type of object that I don't like visiting. Um, I'm actually terrified of white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. It makes me sweat. Even the prospect of going to one right now, even though I have hundreds of times in Lead Dangerous, bugs me, skeeves me out. But I will for the video, okay? I'll do it. God, I hate it though. So we're gonna hit plot route. I could go into the system map and target the uh, the exact place we're going to, but we'll do that later this time. This time we're just gonna plot to the system. Two jumps and I don't need to refuel it looks like, hopefully. So we're gonna launch, lift up, fly away, raise landing gear, boost away until the mass lock goes off. It even tells you what star you're jumping to in the upper right when you hit frame shift drive. This is a red dwarf, so I'm not afraid of those. <laughs> But no, I have a phobia of white dwarves and pulsars and stuff. Not just in this game, just, in, just conceptually. Um, so that's just me, so maybe you'll have no problem. Usually jumping to white dwarves and neutron stars, they're very similar, is um, totally safe. As long as you pull away or you all stop or you, know, you don't keep flying toward it. But it is possible for you to drop out inside of its cone and be destroyed if you can't pull away. Entering the cone of a white dwarf or a neutron star, especially facing the star, is very dangerous. It'll kind of pull you in, and its exclusion zone is very large compared to how small the star is. It's very hard to tell where its exclusion zone is, and if you pass the exclusion zone on objects like this, you're basically dead. So that's why these are dangerous and scary. But the chances are that's not going to happen. 200 to 1. Oh, I hate these things. Oh, and the, the anticipation, man. Oh, I'm locked in now. I can't get out of it now. And so here's another example of the anticipation. You can see the little blue dot of the white dwarf right there coming closer. <laughs> God, I hate it. And here we go. There it is. All stop. They're really beautiful, but I'm not going to look at it for a second. I'm going to immediately turn away and boost away. And I feel all ghibli all over. Oh, God. I'll look at it in my rearview mirror, though. AKA my orbital camera. Okay, really pretty, really scary. So usually if you have a mission, it'll be indicated somewhere on the map, and it is. There's Cockrell Prospect, now target it. Okay, my alignment's good, my speed is gradually going down on its own. My distance is obviously getting closer. Disengage. Drop out. Get within seven and a half kilometers. Press docking. Request is granted. Uh, if it denies your request, then just try again. You know, in like 30, 60 seconds. I mean, pad one, which is probably right there. Looks like we might be backwards. Even though zero one is facing us, I think that's just how it kind of alternates. It looks like it's on our side of the landing pad. So we're going to find out by flying over the landing pad and if we're backwards or not. We are. See how it looks like our ship is flying right at us there? We're backwards on the pad. Not to mention our landing gear isn't out yet. So I'm going to deploy landing gear, fly on past, all stop, turn around. That looks better. Zero ones on the other side. A little off center. I'm going to switch controls to alternate flight, shimmy to the side, go back to standard, and down we go. 
you don't actually have to go inside of the station to complete a mission. So I'll complete it like this. Eventually. There we go. So that's an easy 90k. Alright. But in my case, I'm going to go with the reputation. Now let's head back home after we do one important thing. And you know what that thing is. Refuel, repair, restock, advanced maintenance. Some stations don't have advanced maintenance. It looks like they don't. Now we're going to plot a route home. Galaxy map. I can type in the name of the system, but I've bookmarked Shinrarta. Desra, Founders World Jameson Memorial. And I'll use that to plot my route home. Just two jumps away. There we go. Leave station. Landing gear up. Boosting away so I can get rid of that mass lock. Hitting Y to go to low wake. Actually, no. I don't have to go to low wake in order to go to high wake. Since I have a system targeted, I'm going to use my secondary radar to line up with it. There it is the next system in the route back home. And even though I'm in normal space and not low wake, I can still jump from normal space into high wake. I can skip low wake altogether, which is what I'm gonna do. Okay, we're gonna move around this star. If I was a fuel scooper, I would scoop it. I don't have a fuel scoop on this uh, ship. So instead I'm gonna fly away from the star and then line back up with the next system in my destination. But if you wanna get extra credits when you're traveling, I recommend scanning systems after you travel. How do you do that? Well, every ship has a scanner, a basic scanner. So far we've just been using the left-hand panel, which again is navigation, contacts, transactions, the world and your place in it. The right-hand panel is all about your ship and what your ship can do. Let's go to the right-hand uh, panel here. We are going to go to fire groups. Fire group is your weapons, your scanners, your utilities, everything you can activate while flying your ship. You make as many fire groups as you want. You can make them different clicks on your keyboard. So how your fire group set up to what buttons or whatever you want them to set up to depends on you and how you set up your controls. But on Xbox, one is your right trigger and two is your left trigger, basically. Everything set on the right trigger fires when you pull the right trigger. Everything set to two and left trigger fires when you pull the left trigger. You have different fire groups you can cycle between. However, you set up your controls controls for cycling between fire groups. Fire group one appears to be my combat fire group. I pull the right trigger and I fire both pulse lasers and I pull my uh, left trigger and I launch shafts. My other fire group has nothing bound to my right trigger yet, but left trigger is a heat sink. So this might be a good exploration low wake type of uh, fire group. So I'm going to make discovery scanner fire uh, on my uh, right trigger. So I'm going to switch to that. So for me, switching between fire groups is holding down X and tapping right bumper. Cycle next fire group. So I cycle to my heat sink and discovery scanner fire group, but I can't use them yet because I'm in the wrong cockpit mode. I don't know why Frontier added cockpit modes, but they did. For me, switching cockpit mode is holding down Y and hitting right bumper. So now I'm in this square bluish cockpit mode. In this cockpit mode, I can use my discovery scanner. So now that my cockpit mode and my fire group or cycled to appropriately, now I can finally scan this damn system. And I just hold down right trigger, in my case, and it slowly scans. Boom. You'll hear the horn honk. There. I just scan the system what's immediately around me. This is not enough to scan every single object in the system, especially for big systems. For that, you'll have to go into uh, FSS mode, but um, that's another video for another time. In fact, I think I already have a video on that. Discovering all objects in a system with the full spectrum scanner. So if you want to know how to scan an entire system using the FSS, then just watch that video. Now we're going to go on ahead and head home to Shinrar to Desra. So I'm going to hit Y to go back to High Wake. Now keep in mind, I'm in open. I can interact with other players. Players can pull me out of faster than light speeds, back into normal space and attack me. But space is big. They have to find me first. Trouble is, Shinwar to Desra is an extremely popular system, and I'm dropping out near its star. So if someone really wants to, they can sit next to this star, wait for people like me to drop in, interdict me right away and try to kill me. But it looks like there's nobody here right now. So I'm gonna line up with my dot there, my station, head directly home, no shenanigans. No all stopping and going to the bathroom, no heating up my hot pocket. I can do that after I've docked and I'm safe. Sometimes being ganked is unpreventable, but usually if someone's ganked, if you really review the situation, there is probably five or six things they could have done differently. I've given a very, very brief window for anybody to possibly interdict me. They'd have to be at the right place at the right time down to the minute in order to have caught me there. And even then, I have a bunch of other little ways to get away. That's a lot of ships we just passed. Oh, this is a loop of shame, boys. I was not paying attention, and I'm going to shoot past Jameson Memorial. bad thing about that is it gives uh, gankers another, uh, you know, 30 seconds to possibly catch me. So avoiding having to do the loop of shame is another way to prevent being attacked and ganked. But I did a pretty good recovery there, so I'm, I'm still heading straight for Jameson. 
Now this is um, a rotating slot station, so docking at it's a little different. But the same thing is that we have to be within 7.5 kilometers to request docking. Docking is now requested, and we were granted approval to dock here. We are at landing pad 31, so now we just need to get to the front of this thing. There it is, there's the front. Now it looks like there's a line of ships waiting to dock in there. NPCs will wait in line, and so will players with docking computers will wait in line. You can skip the line and be totally fine. No one will find you or anything, but if you happen to hit a ship, they're gonna find you. Well, I'm gonna go in and screw that Titan, it can't accelerate. Ask me anyways. Oh, but a beluga's coming out, as always. So this keeps rotating, so you'll have to rotate with it. Just line up with it. Or don't. <laughs> I don't care. Fly on in. I have to find a spot. Looks like I'm actually right around here. Here we go, we're home. Refuel, restock, repair. Ship integrity, paintwork. Now I'm gonna introduce you to the rest of the menus really quick here. Let's finish off this left-hand panel. As you see, there's galaxy and system map under navigation. Do filters on nearby locations if you want to. But nearby locations is shown on this list. You can use it to find points of interest near you. Also toward the bottom of this list are nearby star systems. But I more often than not use a system map for interest system things, and the galaxy map for things outside of the system. Transactions has your missions and things that are owed to you, or uh, your fines, outstanding fines. Contacts are nearby stations and other ships. Right hand panel is about you and your ship. So you can read about yourself under the Codex, Hollow Me, Manager Squadrons, Galactic Powers. You can sign up for the Galactic Power if you want. That's not gonna be on this video. See where engineers are and start engineering things if you have horizons. See your ranks, of course. This is where you can put turn off power to certain modules if you need to save power for some reason. You can also see the health of the modules. If you take a lot of damage and the health of a module goes to zero, the module turns off. Let's say I need a little extra power for some reason, like I'm running over power. I can turn off power to anything here. My data link scanner. I already explained fire groups. That's here. Your ship. It'll tell you its stats at the bottom. You can also use it to turn on and off your docking computer and flight assists. External lights, night vision. Those are handy when landing on planets. You might need to turn your wing beacon off or on when you're in a, a wing with other players so that they can find you more easily and jump in and out of locations with you. Inventory is obviously any cargo you're hauling, but also like limpets and uh, materials. For engineering. It also shows your cabins on board and how many passengers you have. In status shows system factions, your reputation of different alliances, your finances here, your rebuy cost is something you need to be aware of. Briefly important I need to talk about is rebuys. The more expensive your ship, the higher the rebuy cost. But buying a rebuy cost is a lot better than having to rebuy your ship. There's a very important lesson that you're going to hear a million times over. Never fly without a rebuy. Always have the credits in your funds to be able to rebuy your ships at its rebuy cost. Should should you explode. If you finally get that money for that anaconda and you buy that anaconda but you forget to save some money for its rebuy cost and you crash it and it explodes, you'll be out everything. Never fly without a rebuy. Top hand panel, talk to people in chat, um, you can join crews and other ships. And the bottom panel. This is mostly used for roles when using multi-crew. You can have people assigned to fighters or gun seats within your ship. It's also where you would launch in a fighter yourself or where you would go out in your SRV on a planet surface if you have an SRV. Anyway, so that's the very basics of Elite Dangerous. It was a lot to go over, I guess, and there's a lot more to go over, especially when we go into specific roles. But if you understand everything I just did in this video, you're in a very good place to start experimenting with different roles and things that you can do in this game. And you can always leave a comment if you have a quick question, and I'm more than happy to answer it. And lastly, if you want to support my channel, you can on Patreon. Let's do a little bit of a shout out to my patrons that made this video possible. These guys support my channel and make videos like this possible to help commanders like you. We have a couple of Geist recruits, Blood Bupcher, strange name but pretty awesome logo, and Tim Shortman. Then the next tier up we have a single Geist cadet, good old buddy Glintwine. And at the next tier up, we have a couple Geist Wing Commanders, my first patron, Frio, and a newer patron, Wing Commander Ham Fisted. I gotta start handing you guys some missions here, right? I actually have a tier where you can commission your own video idea, but anybody who's a patron can send me a message and let me know what they'd like to see in an upcoming video, especially you, Ham Fisted. 
Also, I'd like to take a moment to shout out my best friend since high school. He started his own YouTube channel. So if by chance any of y'all like Pokemon related content, specifically pertaining to the anime, give his channel a try. He goes by Gonzer. You thought Sepulchergeist was weird, how about Gonzer? Frustrated by the insane Pokemon community, he intends to tackle the anime content himself. Ah, what the fuck are those? Jesus! What are those, dude? I don't... <sighs> I don't want to I don't want to see this again. Thanks for all your support commanders and until next time.